got both guns drawn Ain't been a rat since Vietnam Sing home Alabama Sing that dead bad song Turn them speakers up full blast Play it all night long About a decade ago, I started oil painting, having no training or classes or anything like that. And it's just been a tremendous amount of fun. So I thought I'd put a video together that's just considered first oil painting video. It's something very basic. It's just an amateur's perspective on how to get started with the oil paintings. The first intimidation is often just the medium, oils. A lot of people want to start off with something that's water-based because they think of water cleanup as being easier, which it is. But today they have odorless paint thinners. Uh, Turpinoid is one. There are also uh, water mixable oils that are really oil paints. I prefer oils because they stay wet enough for days that you can continue working in the same area and working wet the next day, the, uh, two or three days later. To cure entirely, oils take six months to a year. So the choice is up to you. You can use the water mixable oils if you want to clean up with the water. Um, they are oils, but you clean up with water and you thin with water, or you can use regular oil paint and use the odorless thinner. Either way, to me, one's as easy as the other. It seems like today there's really a lot of good options out there. So I'll put some links below on everything, all the different products. And I think for under $100, you can be painting. I mentioned the paint thinner. You know, for now, all you really need is the paint and the paint thinner. Or if you use the water mixable oils, you know, use water, right, to thin the paint. You never want to put thick paint underneath thin and then thin paint on top because oil paints take six months to a year to cure if you put a thick amount of oil paint underneath and then on top you put thin like something that's been thinned out or you use a medium we'll talk about mediums a little bit um, like linseed oil for example right then you do you have this thin coat that will dry faster on top so what happens is if you have a thick oil underneath as it dries it moves through moving, it will crack the dried thin layer on top. So, so you'll hear this often, thick on top of thin. As far as other mediums go, you add it to the paint to make it glide easier. Just make it so it's not so thick going on and not so hard to push, especially when you're putting on large areas and things like that. Or there's a lot of reason to use mediums. That's a science in itself. For someone starting out, one good medium is linseed oil. For this, you probably don't need anything but the paint thinner or water if you're using water mixable oils. But if you are interested in a medium to make it slide more and make just make it easier, like the bigger areas to cover, you know, then, then I would try linseed oil. But again, we want to put that on the bottom layer. And then on the top layer, you put the thick paint, obviously. You can use it on the top layer too, as long as underneath it, you don't have thick paint. A few concepts to think about. You have something that's protruding, right, coming out or, you know, closer to you, then it tends to be lighter. And then you get into light sources and all that type of stuff. This painting really just has kind of direct lighting on it, so you don't have to deal with that quite as much. With color and with light and darkness and value, as they call it, you can get this almost a 3D effect. Value is like how deep the color is, right? Like how deep the U is. So if you had, let's say, a sap green, for example, right out of the tube, and you're painting an area, and then you added a little dark blue to it, in a sense, you would deepen or give it more value of that U. You darken it or even give it a little black, as opposed to, let's say, that same sap green you mix with a paint thinner, or you mixed with a, a lighter paint, like a white, and had just a little bit of white in it, then obviously that would have less value. But yet they're both the same U. I look at it like the old black and white movies, for example. They're nothing but gray. They just have different value of grays, and yet they're damn realistic. And there's a lot of detail there, obviously. Uh, just like black and white pictures, there's a lot of detail. But really, they're nothing but grays of different values. So one could take a few colors, really, and do something very realistic with those colors. And you see that in art, obviously. So let's get started. All right. Hey, before we get started, I just want to hit the mediums a little bit and this idea of fat over thin layers when painting. 
if one looks at videos on YouTube about paint mediums and oil painting and whatnot, it's enough to make a beginner not want to start oil painting. And don't let that discourage you. That's why I say just use the paint thinner some. And if you want to use something, you could use like a linseed oil um, just to thin things out so the brush moves a little better, especially on large areas like the background. I've painted about 80 some paintings. I've hardly ever had a problem with anything cracking. I had to look hard just to find one that cracked. Um, so it's not like it's such a big deal. And of course, if you're painting, you know, the 16th chapel or something, you know, maybe you're going to care about all these mediums. If you get into fine art and all that type of stuff, then the mediums probably matter. But I think for the first painting, I wouldn't worry about it that much. I'll put some reference lines here and some squares on the canvas that correspond to the photo. And they're eight inches on the canvas and they're three inches on the photo but they're squares and they're the same amount of squares going across for the for the source which is the picture of this duck that we're going to paint right it's the same three three squares going across on the canvas three squares going across on our source picture the idea is just to help you get proportion on your first painting you know you can use this method if you like it's not necessary Artists use rulers and eyebrow rulers and um, T-squares and all kinds of things to keep their proportions. So we're doing the same. Anyway, I'm not going to go paint stroke by paint stroke. For a beginner, I'd recommend that you sketch it out. Just lightly sketch out and put your reference lines on your canvas. When you paint over the pencil, you don't want it so deep that the paint doesn't cover it. Really, all I'm going to do is just look at the source, which you could put on your iPad if you like, and use whatever source you like. I'm just using a duck because there's direct lighting on this photograph. You're not dealing with lighting issues too much, and it's colorful, so you can use whatever colors you want pretty much because it doesn't have to be all that realistic you know as long as it's close you'll have some sort of success but I say use whatever source you like I'm just going to go through this quickly um, and I'm not going to do the detail because that's not what this is about this is just getting you started do everything lightly you know holding it holding the pencil lightly and just looking at your source picture or whatever it is artists use models source pictures real life type things you know for landscaping and just look at it and just sketch it out kind of look at the negative space what i call the negative space where the object's not just look at the negative space and draw that figure in the box and look at where the image crosses certain lines or intersections of the squares and relate that back to the canvas or you look at the box and you say that that the beak for example falls let's say in the bottom third of the box and around the center because I don't sketch out anything I have a little sketch here started but I don't sketch out anything um, I sort of with the paintbrush all I do is make a background border around the image that gives me a contrast to the image so I'm not using the white canvas as my background and then I'll change the color of the background if I like. I mean, I'm going to start off with like a, a green brown type of background just to give me something going that when I start to paint the actual duck, the object, then I have a contrast. That's the only reason I'm doing that. So I'm not looking at a white canvas. OK. And the other thing is I start at the top and go down. That way I'm not dragging my hand through paint. Now, in this case, I'm going to be really informal. I'm going to hold the brushes at the end of the long handled brushes which I like those and just and just be really casual in laying it out just to show you how you can really casually just lay the thing out and then you can work on the details later if you want to get more precise one needs to hold their hand on the canvas some kind of rest their hand on the canvas while they paint the paint's wet sometimes I use my fingers just to, just a couple fingers just to, to balance so I can paint areas that are a little more delicate and smaller areas but for something like this, I'm just going to most of the time just be holding the brushes sort of, you know, casually at the end of the long handled br brushes and just painting. So anyway, I'm going to go through it pretty quick now because I'm just about done with this. <laughs> just a few last thoughts. I'm not trying to teach. This is just to help someone get started with oil paintings from an amateur view. Hopefully it will help someone else enjoy painting. That's all this is. There's no teaching, just my thoughts and what I've found. You'll see that it starts off like a sloppy mess, and it's kind of intentional that I just go about it very loosely and casually to show that 
without being very detailed up front, in the end, it can come together. People who teach painting, I've heard them say to jump around some as you're painting, which is what I do. Um, I kind of do it by nature, I guess. As I see something while I'm painting one area, I may jump to another area. Another thing too, fixing mistakes. So sometimes you can just fix a mistake by just kind of painting over it. That's the flexibility, you know, of paints and whatnot. But if you build up too much of a mess of paint, sometimes you can keep painting over and painting over and you just get more and more of a mess. And at some point, especially for a beginner, I think it's time to just get a paper towel and some paint thinner and just clean it up, clean up the spot, you know. Or for smaller areas, sometimes you have to, let's say you're working on an eye or something really small and uh, you need to clean it up because it's just got globs of paint on it. Sometimes I'll just take a clean brush, really a small brush, and put some paint thinner on it and be careful because it can drip some and just clean it up with the brush. If you want to do realism or something close to it, then starting off, um, I just I just think about making it my own, meaning that um, it doesn't have to be exact, you know, and there's areas where it may be difficult when you're first starting out. So I think the best thing is not to worry about it being exact. If you are trying to be a fine art painter, which is like a photograph type of painting, then that's a different thing, you know, then go for it. On blending, blending is like most important with oils or with anything, I imagine. But uh, when you're in an area to blend, and let's say, uh, let's say like the orange wings on this duck, then once you have your colors applied, it may be a good idea to clean the brush well or go to a new brush, a dry brush, nice and clean and dry to blend away the lines. I guess that's what you're trying to do. You're blending away lines in a sense, or you're maybe doing more than that with the blending. But there's a lot of ideas that artists have about blending. So this is just a beginner tip is to really go back in there with a clean brush. But there's other ideas on blending that, that I like, but I don't want to get into it here. The other thing is these mop brushes can be used for backgrounds. They're really good for backgrounds and blending. And I even like painting with them if I have a painting that's not too detailed. I'll do a lot with the mop brushes, but that's just me. Uh, it's helpful, so I just thought I'd mention it. Just something on creativity that I heard the musician Jack White say, and he was quoting Michael Jackson, actually, and he said, let God in the room. Kind of goes along with not thinking so much. Like when you're painting, once you're actually doing, once you've laid it out, you're going in your direction. It is a good idea probably to just quit thinking and just do. After this basic layout that you're going to see here, I spent a few hours doing the detail of it. If you're struggling with something, whatever it is, whether it's making it look more realistic or just you're not getting what you want. A few things that these artists recommend that have worked for me, sometimes just changing the light, um, you know, darker, lighter, things of that nature, and also even turning the painting, you know, even turning it upside down, because sometimes we get so hung up on the object itself that we're not painting really what we see because our brain's getting in the way. All right, here we go. Grandpa's dying of cancer now The cattle all got brucellosis We'll get through somehow Sweet home Alabama Sing that dead band song Turn them speakers up for blast Play it all night long Play it all night
and blood Sweet home Alabama Sing that dead band song Turn them speakers up for blast Play it all night long Play it all night long Play it enough there ain't much to country living sweat piss jizz and blood sweet home alabama sing that dead band song turn them speakers up for blast play it all night long play it
that you love me, honey. Yeah, and I believed every word you said. You told me that you loved me, baby. Yeah, and I believe every word you say. Did you say the same thing, honey? Yes, lying on that other bed. you everything I had, girl, yeah, but you just won't be, won't be satisfied, gave you all I had, baby, yeah, but you just won't be, won't be satisfied. 